City and Hollywood, we bring you the Jack Benny program, presented by Lucky Strike. In Boston, they say it this way. For my part, I've always been a lucky smoker. They taste clean. And now I know the reason. In New Orleans, it sounds like this. I smoke Lucky's because they taste fresher. And I know the reason for that. While around Seattle, you're apt to hear, I like Lucky's because they taste smoother. And I can show you why. Yes, wherever you go, smokers recognize this as the symbol of better taste in a cigarette. Why? Because this firm, perfect cylinder of fine tobacco means Lucky Strike is made better to taste better. Notice how it holds its shape without crumbling and without loose ends to spoil the taste. That's why Lucky's taste cleaner. And Lucky's are fully packed with long strands of fresh, good-tasting tobacco. And every pack of Lucky's is extra tightly sealed to keep that fresher taste. That's why Lucky's taste fresher. You can tell a Lucky every time by its fine, naturally mild tobacco. And by the way that tobacco is firmly packed, but perfectly shredded to always draw freely and smoke evenly. That's why Lucky tastes smoother. Yes, friends, you can tell by Lucky's rich aroma that Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And you can see for yourself, Lucky's are made better to taste better. So? For a cleaner smoke, a fresher smoke, a smoother smoke, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, and enjoy a better tasting cigarette. Yes. You may not remember, but about eight years ago, I interviewed you at the Rockley Theater in New York. 
Oh, yes, the Roxy in New York about eight years ago, wasn't yeah. it? Our time flies. Do you mind if I just sort of get freshened up a little with my makeup? No, Thank not you. at all. Thank you. I made some notes then, and I'd like to recheck the facts. Okay, fine. Is your radio cast the same? No, no, there's been a slight change. I, I now have Bob Crosby. Bob me. Crosby? Yes. I'll make that change. Do you still live at 366 North Camden Drive? Yes, yes. Sir. No change. Are you still on radio for Lucky Strike? Oh, yes, yes, seems fine. No change. And I see that Rochester's still your butler. Oh, yes, Rochester's been with me for 14 years. And I might add, Miss Bronson, that he's more than a butler. He's been my trustworthy friend and uh, a genial companion. And uh, also, a, at many occasions, a personal confidant. 14 years. Uh, now, about his salary. No change. <laughs> Look, trustworthy friend, I can answer the question. Now, if you really want to do me a favor, go out and get me a sandwich. Yes. Uh, how about Miss Bronson? Well, Rochester, I can't send Miss Bronson out for a sandwich. <laughs> I mean, maybe she's hungry. Oh, oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, would you care for a sandwich? No, Go right ahead. Oh, yeah, right yeah. <laughs> Mr. Benny, yeah. I'd like to ask you a personal question. Oh, now, yeah. I, uh, I know you're a very modest man. Well, yes. Yes, I am. I want a real story about your career. I'd like to capture the true feelings of a man who's, who's been as successful as you are as a comedian. Well... Uh, it must be a great satisfaction for you to, to have reached the fulfillment of your life's ambition. My life's ambition? Yes, you must be an extremely happy man. Miss Bronson, I've never told this to anyone before. But being a comedian was not my life's ambition. And it has not brought me happiness. What? Well, what does a comedian leave? to posterity. Here I am, going on port. <laughs> what, what have I done that the world will remember? But Mr. Benny, you pursued a career that's brought you phenomenal success. Oh, well, Miss Bronson, I mean, success doesn't always bring a man happiness. But your success has brought you such fame. Well, even fame doesn't always bring you happiness. But Mr. Benny, look at all the money you've made. Miss Bronson, money doesn't <laughs> Miss Bronson, deep, real deep down, I consider myself a failure. You a failure? Yeah. Why, what did you want to be? I want to be what I started out to be, a concert violinist. <laughs> a concert violinist? Yes. But, Mr. Benny, are you really sincere? Sincere? Why, Miss Bronson, I can remember many years ago when I was a child back in Waukegan. And I remember when I was six years old, I had already taken up the violin. And even at that tender age, I knew what I wanted to be. And I used to practice hour after hour. And I let nothing, nothing take me away from my violin. I let nothing determine. 
I was convinced that I could be a concert violinist. And I was going to... Hello? Jack, this is Don Wilson again. I made up my mind I'm not going through with that commercial. Don, I'm not going to argue with you over the phone. Now, look, you've got the dressing room next to mine, so come in here and we'll try it. Don Wilson. Here I write a wonderful commercial based on a ballet, and Don doesn't want it. <laughs> This is Don Wilson. Oh, I thought it was Zero Zarina. <laughs> now, this is Miss Bronson. How do you do? Oh, you do? oh, Jack, this is most embarrassing. It is an embarrassing, oh. Don. This is very, very clever. Now, look, at do you mind, Don, I wanted to go right on the stage. Do you mind if we rehearse it here? Oh, no, not at all. Now, look, at now, Don, let's, I'll put on the record, and I want you to do it just the way we're Now, don't be embarrassed. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, all right. Now, here, I'll put on the record. And, uh, Miss, you know, I wrote this. I wrote this myself, you know. And, Miss Brunson, you see, Don represents a tobacco leaf <laughs> who lives in uh, Goldsboro, North Carolina. Now, let's get acquainted with this happy little tobacco leaf. I want to read you what I wrote here. Now, one day, this little tobacco leaf heard that auctioneers from the American Tobacco Company, makers of Lucky Strike, were coming to Goldsboro, which made her very happy. <laughs> was because she knew that she would be selected to go to the big factory in the city because she was so round, so firm, and so fully packed. <laughs> with my violin, and before I knew it, I was 17 years old. You see, and if I do say so myself, my tone and my technique had improved tremendously. So then I was, of course, more determined than ever that nothing could keep me away from being a concert artist. Nothing.
gluing up my violin, I enlisted in the Navy. And then four years later, when I got out of the service, I was sidetracked into vaudeville and then radio and, of course, and then television. Mr. Finney, you used the word sidetrack. Yes, Miss Bronson. Because I am firmly convinced that if I had continued with my career as a violinist, that today, instead of walking out on the stage and telling silly jokes and being a clown and a buffoon, that I could be a concert violinist playing with a symphony orchestra, directed maybe by someone like Toscanini or Stokowski. See, I can see it now. You can just see 3,000 people jammed in the Philharmonic Auditorium. The orchestra is already on the stage.
back in just a moment. But first... Friends, in cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And Lucky's are made better to taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Cleaner? Yes, indeed. When you take the paper off a Lucky Strike, it remains a perfect cylinder of fine tobacco, without annoying loose ends to spoil the taste. Fresher, of course. Lucky's long strands of fresh, mild, good-tasting tobacco are made into a cigarette that's round, firm, and fully packed to give you a fresh-tasting smoke. And smoother, you bet. Lucky's fine tobacco is firmly packed, yet perfectly shredded to draw freely and smoke evenly. So remember, friends, for a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke, you just be happy. Go lucky and make your cigarette Lucky Strike. Thank you very, very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you notice I had a 60-piece symphony orchestra there. You see, at $100 a man, that's $6,000. So don't call me cheap. <laughs> of course, I got a little of the money back because I rented them their tuxedos. <laughs> but I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a very dear friend of mine who's backstage and who starts her own, and a very fine actress too, by the way, who starts her own television show next Sunday. And I'd like to have you meet Miss Ann Southern. I do want to congratulate you. And you know, Ann does her first show for the uh, next Sunday for the American Tobacco Company for Lucky Strikes. And it's a, um, it's uh, a situation comedy called Private Secretary. <laughs> That's right, Jack. Well, tell us, tell us something about the show. Well, it is a situation comedy, Jack, as you said. And it goes on this network at the same time, um, three Sundays out of every four. Mm -hmm. Now you see, I'm on three Sundays in a row and then you're on every fourth Sunday. Now, now you know that, don't you? Yes, my sponsor's lawyer made that very clear. <laughs> As for the show itself, I play a, a private secretary to a big talent star, you see. Mm -hmm. And I'm always getting into trouble. Oh, well, that sounds good. You know, Anne, I'm going to be on a guest on one of your shows. Oh, you are? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in trouble already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see how it works out? <laughs> Say, Anne, I must, I have a little confession to make to you, that you? since I have played this number with the symphony Which orchestra, one, one, did you one, like yeah, it? Well, yeah, thank you. One. But since I did, I've sort of been thinking it over, and I don't know, it, 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 uh, maybe if I had become a concert violinist, I wouldn't have had success and made any money or had a beautiful home in Beverly Hills mm -hmm. or a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just remain a comedian, huh? Yes, well, maybe, yes. yes. Well, then, do you mind? Well, not at all, Toast of the Town on the CBS Television Network.